So let's be honest, it's taken me a lot longer to get all of this going than I thought it would. But life can get in the way of a project and sometimes you just have to keep trying to power through and hopefully you took good enough notes to remember where you left off. Where I left off was when I tested making one of these pieces that you saw me post to Instagram. So today we're going to glue this guy down, cut these guys out, we should have all the flooring glued and I'm going to mount the L-Track. That's my goal for the day. I uh, do have to get the insulation down as well. So we're going to see how far we get. Of course, it's Thanksgiving. Family thoughts to do. Party on. All right, so here I am showing you guys the marine and outdoor adhesive that I got from GarageFlooringLLC.com, which is also where I got the small coin PVC flooring that you see me using. Now it is the felt backed kind, and you want to get that because you get a better adhesion to whatever it is, whatever surface it is that you're gluing to. So in this case, plywood. But if you were using this to glue to any other kind of surface or potentially your cement in your garage because you were trying to create a better surface there, you want to get the felt back for that reason. You get better adhesion. Place some weight, have fun with it, spread out the glue, and wait a handful of hours and you'll be ready to install. Now, we'll let it dry. The back piece is in while everything else is drying so I can start getting the holes going for the l -tray. So I've already figured out where I want to drill down. I'm trying to figure out how far I need to go this way. So right now I have figured out for these pieces of conduit that I'm going to use to take up some of the slack when it comes to weight distribution for pounds per square foot and all the stuff of anything attached to this l track so it'll be attached down there and attached there. So give it a cut here so it's only that long and then mount it underneath and show you guys what that looks like. Pro tip when using a reciprocating saw, it is not very precise. So you want to move really slow and be extremely cautious to make sure that you're getting the line that you want. This is upside down, but this is how I glued the flooring on. So I put this guy down, put a bunch of glue on it, flipped it over, put a bunch of weight and now I just need to cut off the edges and then cut out the holes and this is another piece ready to go mount up. But again, you're gonna pull these things in and out of there multiple times. So just take your time, don't rush, and make it work. If I were to tell you how to do this any differently, do not do it on open coarse concrete like I did. Make sure you either do it on the garage where you've got a smoother surface or a sacrificial board. That would have made it so much easier to do this. I wouldn't have wasted as many blades as I did and it probably would have just been smarter and looked cooler for you guys in the end. This L-Track is aluminum. Aluminum is soft. Using a reciprocating saw on aluminum is dangerous and not very precise. So definitely try to use a miter saw in the future. It's certainly not always perfect. So right now I'm gonna go ahead and trim that little part that you can see at the blue line off to get this thing to fit just a little bit better. Okay, when I got started, I didn't think I was gonna have this L-Track in here, and I was just gonna mate these two pieces of wood, but the seam looked horrible. So I'm gonna go ahead and mount this one with bolts and nuts through the floor, but I'm not gonna use the channel underneath it, and this will just be for light loads. So maybe gear bags or anything like that that I wanna really strap down, maybe gas cans, we'll kinda see how that works out. But, so this is a new addition. I didn't show you guys because it was the exact same process. I had to cut this board, I had to cut this, I had to get the holes lined up. But now what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually mount the L-Track. So we're gonna drill the holes, use the step bit to make that happen. And then after we get the L-Tracks mounted, we'll pull the wood up, put the insulation down. Um, and then once the insulation's down, we'll actually then mount the floor. So, all right, let's make some holes. Woo! Another change of plans. So I drilled a pilot hole just to kind of see what would happen here, what was underneath. And of course, it's right in the middle of one of the channels. So I would not be able to get to a bolt underneath. So what I'm gonna do, do some rivet nuts here. Rivet nuts, rivet nuts, whatever you wanna call them. Um, and again, this is just gonna be for a light load, so I'm not too worried about that. So drill the holes for the rivet nuts, then put a little bit of Rust-Oleum paint on there so that 
Um, the hole that you drill is not exposed to the elements. Stick a rivet nut in there, rivet nut, and then this bad boy will be ready to mount, and then we'll work on the one that the camera is sitting underneath. Hmm. Don't judge me, because I don't have all the right tools for this, because I don't have a bunch of paintbrushes that I can waste with this oil-based paint. But the idea here is, I just drilled a hole in my van, and I don't want it to rust if it were to get wet. So, take some Rust-Oleum, and manuge it all around and up in there, if possible. Yes, having a brush would be the smarter thing. But I don't, so it's gonna make it work. I think uh, more and more I've gotten into this working on a van thing, making it work is kind of like everybody's motto. Now that you've listened to me talk about using a paper towel instead of a brush to apply the Rust-Oleum, here you see me doing it up in the front. So a little bit of filing to make sure it's not too sharp, a little bit of application with the Rust-Oleum uh, there at the front and a couple other spots. And then of course, once that dries, what is it time for? The floor insulation. So of course, 3M Thin Slate that I did get from Adventure Wagon. Uh, pro tip, do not use box cutters to do this. Use scissors. Uh, trying to use a box cutter is does not give you the desired effect. Scissors will be much more effective. Uh, 3M adhesive spray to get this guy to stick. Um, of course, what you see here is much more fast paced than it really was. There was time in between for that uh, adhesion to spray or that adhesive to dry a little bit before actually sticking it on there. You want it to be kind of tacky to the fingertips. Now, as you see, as I move forward, the L-Track is uh, installed over the insulation and then the boards will be fitted in there. So obviously what I was talking about, some of this is attached to conduit, some of it is rib nuts, and some of it is a little bit of redneck engineering. Day two of this weekend, trying to finish the flooring. I've got the mounts underneath of the channels I was talking about. I'll go underneath and show you guys how I'm doing that, but I need a second body and another set of hands up top here to hold the bolt so I can be underneath and tighten them. So we're gonna get that done today and cut holes for the D-rings and get all that kind of stuff going and then see where we're gonna move forward from there. We've got Christmas lights and all that kinds of stuff to get ready for the holidays. So hopefully this doesn't take me that long, maybe another two or three hours to get going. I thought this was gonna work to keep my hair out of my eyes, but unfortunately I don't think it is. So now we've got this guy ready to go. Let's go ride. All right, some steak for sure with that guy. So just pay more attention when you're planning out where you want to put all this shit. You know what I'm saying? This is when it pays to have somebody who's willing to help you because there are times when you cannot do everything and you need four hands, five hands, or six hands, eight hands when you only have two. So thank you to the wife for coming out and tight helping me tighten this L-Track. So here's the channel, kind of turned sideways looking at it. I wanted to do this so it would distribute the weight. So if anything ever happened that it wasn't just pulling on that one spot right there, that it would distribute the weight all the way across. So here's kind of the, a look at this other side here. Woo so those are the four bolts in the middle, and then the two on the outside are riv, riv nutted um, just for extra stability there on the ends, but the main weight should come from these guys. Now to do the front. This is just a great look at the different positions you will get yourself into while working on your van. I myself started on the passenger side and completely scooted myself over to the driver's side, underneath. It was very interesting. 
And on the other side, more in the front where I have the longer L track, this is kind of, I had to break it up so I didn't have a lot of room with these big channels. So you can see we had a little one here, little one there. If you look down some, there's another one boop, boop, over there. And we just kept on going. Let's tighten up now. We're almost there. Well, the floor is in. Uh, obviously, a lot of learning that went on. Uh, mistakes that I made that I had to fix so that I know that I'm going to have to kind of finagle around in the future. But first time doing this, so just trying to solve problems as they come up and do a little bit of pre-production so that maybe some of those problems don't come up. But regardless, sometimes you just can't overthink this stuff too much and that's what happens and you just have to roll with the punches as they come. So biggest thing to finish for the floor before uh, I totally move on to some of the more wiring and the walls is I need to do some trims, trim pieces. So I'm gonna try to do a little bit of research this week to find some pieces. But if anybody has any ideas, definitely reach out, let me know. Um, what you think that I should be kind of looking at. I think I'm just going to try to find some aluminum L brackets um, to be able to put here um, and just zip those down and we'll see how those go. Uh, but that's my thought right now. Black, of course, because I kind of want to keep with the gray and black. So you guys tell me, what do you think? Do you have any questions, things I should have done differently, why I did things a certain way, um, how to do it better next time? So we will show you guys some of the trim that I put on here and then we'll start with some more electricity and we'll put the walls up. When I recorded that outro, I had no idea what I would be doing. But then I went to Home Depot and found some 1 by 20 inch angle iron there made of aluminum and decided that's what the way I'm going to go. So you're seeing me here cut it. Again, be very careful if you're using a reciprocating saw. I forgot to hit record while I was installing the trim, but I got a piece of just some 1 by 20 1 inch deep uh, L bracket aluminum from Home Depot. Cut it to the 59 inches, installed it by five holes drilled, five screws into the plywood, and it looked pretty darn clean. Um, kind of happy with it. Uh, I've got to do a little bit more cleanup. I don't have time right now to do over there at the passenger sliding door, but we'll be able to get to that. I've got to get the Grim Possible so we can film for this weekend. So look for a Grim Possible video in the near future. So if this that video might make it out before this one, this one before that one. Regardless, if you're finding this from the motor van stuff, please go check out the Grim Possible videos. Those things were amazing. Riders try to ride what Graham Jarvis sets out for them. Whew, mind blown. Uh, hope you guys are enjoying this. I'm a little tired. <laughs>